Hey guys, we're going to record some messages here. I'll preach these live uh, in the next coming weeks, I believe. But I wanted to go ahead and plant a seed today um, here on Facebook and give people an opportunity to hear for themselves what maybe you, you can't get to in a live service with us because you live elsewhere. And um, maybe even you don't have time to, to catch it at another time, but this is your moment, this is your time. And so with that said, I want to, I want to start with um, some verses that you rarely, rarely ever hear preached, really rarely ever hear talked about. And, and I want to set this up in such a way that it, you can practically apply it to your life. It's one thing to be told there's a problem. It's another thing to be told how to solve that problem. Um, and anybody complaining about a problem they're not willing to help solve or actively pursuing to solve is not constructively criticizing, they're complaining. And um, so with that said, um, let's, uh, let's just jump right in and, and let me give you some verses that I think are going to really help you. And I want to, I want to say something here. I want to be very clear. Um, and, and, and you need to take this with you. You know, you need to hold this as a precious gem inside your heart. Uh, as you watch this, the people that you read about in the new Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, Peter, James, Jude, Onesimus, and on and on and on and on. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the mentality of, the, of this church world that we have now is the Old Testament we no longer need, we no longer use, you know, don't pay attention to it. It's, it had no bearing, very little bearing on the New Testament. Everything's different, everything's shifted, everything's changed. And um, what you need to understand is that the reason that so much in the New Testament is, is new and you don't see so much of the Old Testament just continuing on in the mouths of people, is, is they already knew it. They were already walking around with it. Most Jewish uh, youth, by the age of 12, had the first five books of the Bible memorized. And so somebody says, well, see, Jesus didn't go to Bible school, and them disciples didn't go to Bible school, and I don't need to go to Bible school. Well, you might not need to, but you may need to. But if you're not... If you're not led of the Lord to go to Bible school, don't, don't use that as your excuse because you don't have the first chapter of the Bible memorized, much less the first five books of the Bible memorized. And so you're not talking about uneducated people, okay? Uh, they just weren't at the level that the Pharisees were at, but neither are you. And so what's, in, what's important is that um, uh, when I read you these verses, I want you to say to yourself, do I have that lodged in my heart? Am I walking around with that as a part of who I am and a part of what I do? Is that, is that me? Or am I just kind of piecemealing stuff together? So you need to lay this foundation if you don't already have it before you move on to anything deeper or anything like that. Okay? And so every single... Christian in the New Testament that was Jewish, and the majority are, already knew every verse I'm going to give you. And so if you already know something, there isn't always a whole lot of reason to be talking about it. And so you, you're just, don't see these as two separate books in the sense of they don't fit together. See them as a complete book, and the one builds upon the other. And so and then the second thing I want to say is because we're going to talk about wealth, we're going to talk about prosperity, we're going to talk about financial increase and all that kind of stuff. And, and somebody says, well, oh, that's the Old Testament, though. We're in the New Testament. And, and the idea is that now everybody's, anybody spiritual in the New Testament's broke, busted, disgusted, poor. You know, that's the mentality. But that's not true at all. The reason that you see more of a focus in the New Testament on the Holy Spirit. Uh, in a person, through a person, on behalf of a person, and not so many scriptures on wealth, riches, possessions, flocks, herds, etc., is because the New Testament, the New Covenant, ushered in Galatians 3.14, 
you've been redeemed from the curse of the law so that you might receive the blessing of Abraham as a Gentile. That's the Old Testament stuff that we're going to kind of talk about right now. And the promise of the Spirit. See, the promise of the Spirit wasn't given until after Jesus was resurrected. So you've got 4,000 years of human history that, that the whole gospel that day, by and large, in one way or the other, was to get the blessing uh, to, to humanity. So it's called the blessing of Abraham, but for it's the blessing of Abraham, it was a blessing of Adam and Eve. If you go back to Genesis 1.28, he says he blessed them and said, multiply, be fruitful, have dominion, have authority, etc. So the blessing has been God's gospel throughout all time. He didn't reveal this aspect of the blessing like he did in the New Testament with the people in the Old Testament. So you had to be post-resurrected Jesus to be a partaker of the promise of the Spirit. But that does not mean it was at the neglect of the blessing of Abraham. And I just, I can't say that loud enough, strong enough. Uh, I just, you, you need to forget anything pastor disaster or brother Billy Bob or whoever tried to religiously brainwash you with. Just forget all of that. Drop all that. And just listen. Listen to what Scripture says. Because the Old Testament was written to you Christians just as much as the New Testament was. And you're expected to know it. But you're expected to, to be building upon it with the New Testament. And so, have a healthy balance. You are to be just as blessed financially as you are spiritually. And religion lied to you and told you that's not the case. That the only thing you need is Jesus. Well, have you ever called the light company and said, uh, Jesus paid it all. And they're like, uh-huh, well, who's coming down here with $43.28? Shall I expect the man from Nazareth or will that be you? <laughs> so you can't, don't get so religious minded and so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Okay. So you need to know your covenant. And your covenant is twofold. The blessing of Abraham, which has three parts, and the promise of the Spirit. And so right now in this video, for this sliver of time, going up this side of the road, not talking about Holy Ghost baptism, uh, not talking about whatever, you know, we're talking about the blessing, and he teaches us to prof profit or prosper. Okay? And... So don't, just, I know how people read the titles and stuff, and oh God, there is another prosperity preacher, there I go again. And no, that's not, you know, just don't be so snobbish and so religiously prideful about stuff and be like that. Don't be like that. Because everybody got up today to go to work that had to work to prosper, to profit. Everybody did. Because money answers all things. That's what Ecclesiastes says. And so if I say to you, Jesus wants to help you maximize that, that ought to be cause for shouting grounds instead of religious snide looks and, and, and shunnings and all the things that people do. And so I, I've kind of introduced this a little bit here to give people a chance to come on. But with that said, I'm going to read you some verses, then I'm going to tell you where they are in the Bible. But I want you to hear these six or so verses just in string, and, and I want your eyes to go, wow, that's my covenant? God wrote that to me? Yeah, he did. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even it has taught you, abide in him. Thus has the Lord Thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, said, I am the Lord thy God, who teaches thee to profit, who causes thee to walk by the way in which thou dost walk. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. But you shall earnestly remember the Lord your God, 
for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And it shall be in that day that the burden of the Assyrian shall depart from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. The yoke shall be destroyed because of fatness which prevents it from going around your neck. For out of his fullness and abundance we have all received and all had a share and we were all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing and even favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift. But the path of the uncompromisingly just and righteous is like the light of dawn that shines more and more, brighter and clearer, until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect day to be prepared. You crown the year with your bounty and goodness, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. The luxuriant pastures in the uncultivated country drip with moisture, and the hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks, the valleys also are covered with grain. They shout for joy and sing together. And these words which I am commanding you this day shall be first in your own minds and hearts. Then you shall wet and sharpen them, so as to make them penetrate and teach and impress them diligently upon the minds and hearts of your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets, forehead bands between your eyes. You shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you, with great and goodly cities which you did not build, and houses full of all good things, which you did not fill, and cisterns hewn out, which you did not hew, and vineyards and olive trees, which you did not plant. And when you eat and are full, and then it goes on from there. But that's ver those verses are in the Bible. Those verses are Old Testament and New Testament verses. And those verses are a conversation the Holy Ghost is having with each one of us today to say that I want to teach you how to profit. I want to teach you how to prosper. And I can do it through the anointing. My anointing will teach you to prosper. So let me give you the verses. I know you're going to want those. So the first verse I read was 1 John 2.27. The second one I read was Isaiah 48 and verse 17. Then I read Psalm 35 verse 27. Then Deuteronomy 8.18. Isaiah 10, 27. John 1, 16 out of the Amplified Classic. If you read that out of the King James, it won't read the same. Proverbs 4, 18. Psalm 65, 11 through 13. And the last several I read was Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. And so if you, you just spend some time rolling around those verses in your heart, in your mind, speaking them out loud, speaking them over yourself, and just let those words begin to talk to your heart, you're going to see that the Holy Ghost has the ability, the anointing that's inside you because of Jesus. And somebody says, well, what is the anointing? The anointing is the Spirit of God on human flesh doing what only God can do. And so the Spirit of God is living in you. He's living on you. He's around you. And, and Jesus said he will teach you how to succeed. He will teach you how to profit. He will teach you how to prosper. And don't make it so spiritually out there that it's no actual application in your life today. This verse is saying to you, if you will cooperate with my instruction, I will make you more money week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. 
to where your kids coming after you and their kids coming after you will continue in that perpetual flow and will build a dynasty in your family's life. That's what, should the Lord tarry? That's what those verses are saying. You, you can argue all day that they don't, but they do. But you're not going to argue with me because I don't have time for your foolishness. So you might as well go find a wall and talk to it. I'm telling you the Bible says that if you will listen to the Spirit of God inside you, He will show you how to make more money. He will show you how to increase in material possessions. He told you I've got houses for you that you didn't build full of stuff you didn't buy. Cities that I built for you. Um, Mark 4, which you know, we're not even getting into it right now. Um, or excuse me, Mark 10, 29 and 30 says, anybody who's left their present situation for mine and my message, I will give you in this life a hundredfold return, houses, lands, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So why has that not happened in your life yet? Because you are not teachable. You won't listen. Or you listen and you won't change. You won't do. So don't blame the devil and don't blame God. Go look in the mirror. It's your fault. And I know that's straight and I know that's hard, but you know what? Would you like for me to call to you and pat you on the head and lie to you like so many people do? And besides, I'm in a video. You can't be mad at me. You don't even know if I'm talking to you or not. But now if you get convicted and offended, then probably the Holy Ghost is talking to you. But I'm not. I don't know. Unless he tells me. So stop being a knucklehead. Stop being unteachable. Stop being stiff-necked. And listen to the Spirit of God who's teaching you how to prosper and profit and increase. He's teaching you how to make more money. But you won't go apply anywhere. You won't go start your own business. You, you won't. There's a lot of things. And, and this is a series. This is not going to be done in a day. And I'm going to go about a half hour or so, and then I'm going to take a break. I'm going to come back and hit it again. You know, pra perfect practice makes perfect. And I'll be preaching this for years to come. But I'm telling you right now, there's things you're probably doing that you don't even realize that are sabotaging your financial success. And so some of the things we're going to talk about in this series is worry, fear, uh, the, the condition of your heart. We're going to talk about what what are the the enemy's tricks and plots. Paul said we're not ignorant of his devices. What are some of the ways that he tries to trip us up? We're going to outline them for you. We're going to talk about them in deep detail so that you can be self-aware and you can recognize, wow, you know, that's kind of sounds a little bit like me. That's kind of like where I am. That's kind of like, wow. Did, wow, didn't even put those two things together. See, and then when you start to hear that and see that, then you make changes and prosperity starts to come up a little bit more in your life, a little higher in your life. You know, two years ago, um, I hadn't written a book and had it published by anybody other than just like Kinko's or somebody, you see. And um, I was asked to preach at a church across the summer like you would a, like a class or something on divine healing. And the minister said, and if you have anything for sale, bring it. Don't give it away charge them for it because a lot of times when you just give people stuff it winds up in the floorboard of their car anyway that's why a lot of flea markets will charge you five dollars just to get in because if you spent five to get in you're probably going to spend some more so you don't feel so bad about throwing five dollars away <laughs> for just walking around what you could have done on a track or the beach somewhere and so um i had just i was work winding up a master's degree i was i was away for a weekend at a, a cabin on the water for the sole purpose of finishing up my master's degree in theology. And I got that phone call out of the blue. And the Spirit of God just is like, pause on this master's, and I want my books. I, I mean, clear as day as I heard you say, I want my books. I could have, well, Lord, I'm trying to finish my master's degree, and don't you know how special that'll make me feel? And, you know, here I'm so close, and I just need this weekend to do it. And you want a book, and I got to preach in a month. I got to have this book written and published in a month. And you didn't say book, you said books, which means we may be writing for a while. You know, I could have just wah, 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 you know. <laughs> but I, you know what I did? I did exactly what he said to do. And I don't know how many thousands of books we've gone through. I've, I've 
asked this company a couple times, could you please go back and look at how many I've bought from you and let me know so I know how many we've gone through because I know they ain't sitting around here. And so, but it's in the thousands, you know, and, and we've given quite a few away. We have. I still wind up old soft to give people books. And I just, compassion, here you go. Or I'm, you know, actually led. But we sell them. And I, you think if, I, if I've gone through 2,000 books and I've sold 1,000 and the average is $20 a piece, well, you know, that's quite a bit of money right there. Right? So uh, has that blessed the ministry? Has that increased us? Has that profited us? Certainly. There's things we got to do that we would not have got to do otherwise. And I'm actually on my 10th book, you see. And I, I probably thousands probably high on that so far. Maybe not. We'll see. I, like I said, I'm gonna get the number from the company, and you be the first to find out when I find out how many I bought, and look at how many we sold, and versus how many we give away. But do you know when we give them away, we still sow a twenty dollars seed, so we're entitled to a harvest on it. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So whether we sell them or whether we give them, we still increase. We still profit, and the word goes forth. You know, it, 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 it enlarges our territory. And so you'll get calls from other people to say, hey, can you come? You know, and I'm just talking, to, and you know what? I don't have to do about these books. I don't ever have to write them again. And so they're, they're ready to resell themselves for the rest of my life to my kids' lives and my kids' kids' lives, whenever that day happens, you see. And so we're creating legacy. You know, they call it intellectual property and stuff like that. And that's just one little way I can I can share with you how this can practically apply. He may just be telling you, go apply at this other company. He may say, start you an online blog and take up donations or whatever. I, I can't tell you how it will apply to you, but I can tell you how it's applied to me. But the only reason I was looking for it is because I found those verses in the Bible. Let me read you the first two verses again. It, it's just amazing. Uh, how, if you'll just put the word to work, how it'll work for you. First John 2, 27, but the anointing which you have received of him, now make sure you've received his anointing. If you don't know Jesus, you need to know Jesus. Just ask him into your heart, confess him as the Lord of your life, and get busy with him. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things. Do you see that? It doesn't say it teaches you of all spiritual spooky things. It doesn't say it teaches you of a few things. It says it, the anointing has the ability to teach you about everything. And then it says and it's, it's truth. So it will teach you truth about everything. Well, the next verse is Isaiah 48, 17. Thus has the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, said, I am the Lord thy God who teaches thee to profit. So you can, you can put those two verses together and still be biblically correct, and you can say the anointing teaches me the truth about how to profit. And I don't mean for somebody else. I mean for you. He, he knows who you are, what's inside you, what you're capable of, what you're not capable of, where you should be, where you shouldn't be, where you can go, where you can't go. You know, And all, he knows who you know. He knows what you don't know. He knows who knows what you don't know. He knows who can do what you can't do. And he knows how to get it to you in ways that will cause you to profit. Proverbs 10, 27 says, The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow. So not only will he teach you to profit, but he will teach you to be rich without weighing your soul down with sorrow that you got it. You know, folks win the lottery, and then within a year, they're bankrupt. That's not God. That's not the Lord. That's not the blessing, you see. And, and you'd be surprised at some of the things that you do that you think are bringing increase, and it's not. It's just wasted motion. It's something he never told you to do. You're being busy, but you're not being productive. And so sometimes, I tell you what, I, I heard a story. There was a businessman, and this minister said, how did you succeed like you did? He says, i tell you the truth. Whenever an opportunity presented itself, I got alone in my prayer closet and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed until I got a peace about doing it or, a, or a, a witness in my spirit, don't do it. 
And I would, and, and until I got that, whether that opportunity came and went, I would, I made no decision. I made no choice. And how do we live our lives? We just kind of get up, winging it, piece it together, McDonald drive by spirituality, and just try this, try that, throw mud at that, throw mud at this, ask ask these old heathens for money, ask ask this person over here, you know. And it's like the Lord didn't tell you to do all that. He probably told you to sit down in the closet and listen and stop being so desperate that you just take on anything and anything from anywhere. Well, how doesn't the wealth of the wicked later? Yeah, but not not like somehow some are doing. You know, no. And one of the first things the Lord wants to do to transfer the wicked's wealth into the kingdom is get them born again. <laughs> you know, anyway, that's another day, another dollar, another story. But the point is, is that there is a way that he wants to talk to you about the steps you should take to increase your position in life. And if you don't know anything how to do, just start speaking those verses over your life. 1 John 2, 27, Isaiah 48, 17, on and on and on. Psalm 35, 27. Yeah, I gave them to you earlier. You, you have to go back and listen again, which is something not a lot of people will do. To assume that you hear everything the first time is to be deceived. That's why we preach these things so many times. I think it was D.L. Moody who said, until you've preached a sermon 50 times, you really, you really don't know it. You know, you're really not an expert at it. So how many times does it take to hear it <laughs> for you to get it? And so I, this first video was simply to come on here and introduce to you a series of messages that are coming here online that are going to teach you how to profit. And we're going to talk about the things that hold you back. We're going to talk about the things that maybe the patterns that you're in inside yourself that are maybe hindering this, this teachability. I mean, you think about a teacher and a student, if the class atmosphere is messed up, there's no real learning taking place. And until you can give the teacher back what they want to hear, you probably haven't learned the material. And so if it's awkward for you to say, the Lord teaches me to proffer, prof, profit, prosper, whatever how you want to say it, if that's awkward for you, that thing's not settled in your heart yet. It's got to graft itself. And so you might need to sit with this a minute because you, you maybe don't realize how poor your mind thinks and how even if you do have money, you wind up back with none. Unless you're making investments, tangible investments that are increasing for you, you know, you're just, you just have a broke spirit, you see. And so you've got to fix things. you got a poverty mentality. we got to work that out. we got to... Use the word and make crooked places straight. I know he, he, you know, casts every vain imagination down, but you probably don't even want to admit that you think like a poor person and don't even realize it. See, that, you know, oh, I got to quit doing this. I got to quit doing What you need to do is you need to get rid of a poverty mentality and a lot of things in your life will change. Because once you see that godliness is profitable into all things, you'll stop doing shady business deals. You'll stop doing, you'll stop uh, kind of prostituting your anointing out. You'll stop, you know, hanging out on street corners, you know, trying to raise funds when the Lord's like, we ain't hookers. We ain't spiritual hookers. Don't be doing that. Come on back inside and, and, and just listen to the word a while. Let me show you where to really plant some seed. You know, that's the truth. But people are like that. And they do it with relationships. They yoke up with, with you know, oh, I can change them. I can fix them. Because a cute got a little bit of money. Or I'm going to go to this church because better business contacts over there. You, you're a fool. And, and you're the very ones who need to sit and listen to this message over and over and over. Because you're not being led by the inward witness. You're not being led by the word. You're not being led by the spirit. So I'm going to hop off here, take a break, and then I'll come back and do another one. But listen to me, you need to begin to, to think about how the word increases you, how it teaches you to increase. First John 2, 27, Isaiah 48, 17, the anointing teaches me to profit. But if you're, if you're not walking sensitive to the Holy Spirit, it's costing you money. If you're not walking sensitive to the voice of God, 
to the Word of God, it's costing you money. And you're blaming the devil, you're binding demons, you're, you're pleading with God. And, it, and the problem is you. It's not any of those other things. In 6,000 years of human history, two people have never changed. God and the devil. That only leaves one person, and that's you and I. So, uh, let me pray for you, and you pray for me, and uh, we'll just we'll take a break, and I'm going to come back and do another one here in a bit. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, where I just sense a release of prosperity, a release of an anointing to teach them to profit and to prosper. Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is our pastor, the Lord is our shepherd, and because our connection with him, our entanglement with him, we shall not want for anything. Lord, the human heart sometimes thinks it knows things it don't really know, thinks it sees things it don't really see, but your word can show us what's what. I'm asking you to show each of us blind spots, mistakes, wrong thought patterns, wrong uh, a series of choices, wrong alignments, wrong assignments, and help us to make these changes. I pray that we'll be sensitive to make these changes, and we'll begin to do what you're actually asking us to do, and say what you're actually asking us to say. In Jesus' name, we say it so, we speak it so, and we release this over each person. Man, I felt an anointing destroying yokes right there. Some of you are just going to think, oh, that was a nice video. But yet a supernatural transference took place. And years from now, you're going to be like, man, my life changed. And I didn't even really realize in the videos when it changed. In the name of Jesus, if that's you, you receive that. But I did. I felt the Holy Ghost of God go through this into your lives. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>